Hey everybody, Negaroth here, bringing you another brand new exciting LP experience. This game, hailing from the faraway lands of Japan, is called Zero Sukahami no Kamen, or what would have been Fatal Frame 4 had it been released somewhere outside of Japan. Yeah, this particular instance of the Fatal Frame series was never released outside of Japan due to a number of issues, which I'll get into later, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and start a new game on normal, and I'll see you after the cutscene. なんか思い出せた。うん。随分前のことだし。私たち5人が映っていたのは確かにこの建物ね。うん。ねえ、みさき。本当にここに来ればよかったのかな。写真の場所でも何も思い出せなかったし。もう一回私の言う通りにして
And what do we have here? It's very obviously a flashlight, but through some means or another, we can immediately discern that it is Misaki's flashlight. And as we now have a means of light, we now have a reason to use the Wii mode and direct the light beam around. Now, initially this is just a good way to highlight things, but where is Masaki? Misaki? Misaki? Yeah, Masaki is acting very questionable. But yeah, now that we have the flashlight here, wherever we direct our view with the Wii Mote, we'll highlight with a beam of light. It does help to illuminate things as there is obviously nothing but the moonlight giving us a light source. Let's see if we can't continue following along with Masaki. Nope. Seems we have run into something of a roadblock. A very common roadblock, but we do need to find a key. It seems as if the game is nice enough to direct us directly to where we need to go. Now, as you can probably tell, a lot of the game is in Japanese, but through the translation we're able to read this and discern fact that we are at the Aso Museum, and more importantly, that if we have any questions, we should direct them to the second floor management office. So I guess that is where we are going to need to head. Maybe we can ask somebody up there to have this door unlocked for us. Also, if that name Aso seems familiar, it's because you've been watching the other Fatal Frame LPs, or possibly because you have played the Fatal Frame games, but that name is very important, and we'll be finding out why later on in the video. <laughs> and it does look like we're not here alone, or just with Masaki. I don't know, maybe that person would be nice enough to lend us some assistance. Maybe fill in some of the questions that we currently have right now. Person must have been a lot faster than initially gave the impression. Don't seem to be down here. I will say that, as per usual with the architecture in Fatal Frame, I like how most of the buildings and things and settings seem pretty realistic. They seem like they were set up as houses or villages creepy hallways. So while this setting is obviously on par with the creepiness of the other Fatal Frame series, there are some less subtle things that the designers of the area seem to want to throw at us, such as this Junji Ito-esque doodle on the wall. Sadly, it's too low res to actually get an idea of what it's supposed to say. But there are less subtle horror instances, such as the handprints on the window here, and whatever is causing this bizarre distortion filter over the screen. Also, it seems like somebody's behind the window there. 
部屋に戻りなさい Maybe that was just a hallucination. I mean, shadows can play tricks on the mind, I'm sure. And as we take a look through the gap in the curtains, it seems dark in there, but mostly empty. Just a normal empty office. But in this particular room, we do get introduced to another new mechanic for Fatal Frame 4, and that is that most items in the game aren't inherently obvious. Nope. We have to highlight them using our Wii mode, and that little blue flash there indicates that there is an item for us to get. And it's not always as simple as just pressing A to pick up an item. Instead, to heighten the tension, we now have to hold down A to force our character to slowly reach for said item before they will pick it up. Now, if we are Unsure about whether or not we want to pick up an item, we can retract our arm and do that as much as we want. But let's just go ahead and pick this up. Seemingly a very innocuous note, but it does inform us that there is a spare museum key on one of the nearby desks. And with that knowledge, we know just the general area where we need to search. But you may also notice that blue little light that's now in the lower right-hand portion of our screen. The more illuminated that is, or the stronger the light on that, indicates that we are looking in the general direction of something of interest. It's not always an item, though in this case it definitely is. It's the museum key we were looking for. Also, another nice feature for Fatal Frame 4 is that whenever we do find an item, the game is nice enough to show us on the map where we need to use said item. Now, obviously, in the tutorial, it's a door that we left moments ago, so it's not too difficult to remember where that was. But for the most part, in the future, this is actually going to come in pretty handy. But you may notice that our light is still hitting something of interest, and I don't think it's these nurses' uniforms. Instead, it's what appears to be a number of call buttons for patients' rooms. I think, though we aren't able to garner too much information, but it does go to it does go to show that occasionally that blue radar light. Is not always for items to pick up. Instead, just places of interest. But with our key now in hand, we can head back down to the museum and reach Masaki. But not before we are auditorily assaulted by whatever this horrible, dingy noise is. We just, just rush to this area as quickly as possible. Try to not focus on the noise. It'll be over soon enough. Yes, let's hurry to Masaki. I, I I do apologize for how piercing that particular 
situation was. For the most part, the Fatal Frame series has been pretty good about its auditory cues and general sound work. For some reason, the direction they felt like going with in Fatal Frame 4 is good for the most part, but there are certain situations that are very questionable. But they are they're they're fairly short and sporadic. So we don't have to worry about them too much. So, hopefully Masaki is all ears to hear about our horrifying adventure. That was pretty close, especially considering still we have no means of defense. But, I guess since we have a little bit of time, we have evaded the ghost for now, we might as well have a look around the museum, see what it has to offer about our friend So. Now, I mentioned earlier that it should be a name familiar to those that have played Fatal Frame or have watched any of the LPs. Kunu Kunihiko Asoi is the man that made the camera obscura through his supernatural investigations and has been our means to defend ourselves throughout the series. Now, that one portrait there is only one of two instances where we've actually seen the man. I think we had a quick view of him in... Fatal Frame 2 and possibly in Fatal Frame 1 via flashbacks. But this has been one of the few times when his name has really been brought up quite this often, I suppose. Especially we, we now get even more notes from him. I think there were a few instances in Fatal Frame 2 where we got some notes from him. But in this case, we learn uh, that he has visited Rogutsu Island to help them with some of their supernatural issues. Now, he mentions that there are a few exorcisms that have been going on the island, and that for some reason or another they asked to have one of his camera obscuras just in case. And we see it over there on the podium. It seems to be calling out to us. I guess I see no harm in just giving it a little touch. And what in a, an ornate camera it is.
as with most games in the Fatal Frame series, once we get the camera obscura and a means to defend ourselves, that means that it is time for our first introductory ghost fight. Now, the camera works pretty much the exact same way as it does in the other, other Fatal Frames. Merely bring up the viewfinder, aim it at a ghost, and then fire. But the good news is that since the Wii has such finicky controls, we now have the introduction of a lock-on function, which makes fighting ghosts quite a bit easier. So, as you can see, we build up power by showing the my via the blue lights, and when I get the opportunity, flash a quick shot, and get a whole bunch of weird point bonuses that I'll explain later. But being as it is the tutorial, it's definitely not too difficult. <laughs> Though it definitely freaks the hell out of Madoku here. But there is one other thing that's kind of getting to me. My senses are tingling for a collectible. There's this very odd looking doll sitting beneath the desk here. Now, what this doll is, oh, as soon as I finagle the Wii controls just a little bit, I do apologize. I'm not super familiar with actually using a Wii mote. And also the hitbox on this is a little bit weird, but once you have the viewfinder flashing blue, we get our first startling JPEG of the game, and we break the curse on the doll. Now, just what is this doll, you may be asking? Well, that will be explained shortly. It is a Hozuki doll. Now, a Hozuki doll is generally a bad omen. It's used in a memorial service for a child that is killed. But for some reason or another, this island seems to like placing them just absolutely everywhere and they are going to be hidden throughout the game, and I will be trying to collect all of them. Now, I don't know exactly why they decided to put in this collect-a-thon into Fatal Frame, but needless to say, in the inventory screen here, we now see that we have a doll counter, and I think there are a total of 75 dolls in the game, but we won't worry about that for right now. Let's just get the hell out of here. 